Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have a brief game to share with you from 1969. Those of you who are fans of Gambit Play, I think will enjoy this one. It's not every day you get to see Team Black winning in only 14 moves. On the white end, Karen Grigorian, and he's playing against Roman Jinji Hashvili. Opening wise, Ray Lopez, Bishop C5, C3, and here comes the Cordell Gambit, F5. This is a close relative to the Schliemann defense. The Schliemann defense is without the moves, Bishop C5 and C3. Now, in the game, D4 is played, but I want to touch on a couple different moves you may see here as white. I want to give you a better sense of this gambit from this brief game. One of the moves is for white to take on f5, and what's considered a best line from here is e4, d4. It gets really messy, and this is kind of what we're prepared to play if we were going for a gambit. We have a structural imbalance, we have a minor piece imbalance. It's a ball game ahead, a messy ball game ahead. One tweak to that variation, and white can already find himself in a significantly worse spot. And that is to meet this move e4 with queen e2. Bad move. Why? After queen e7, this knight has to go back home. Not a good sign for white to have to underdevelop in this opened position. Maybe you get away with it in a closed position, but closed it is not. Okay. One other move is to meet f5 with d3, and I have a pop quiz for you. What are some of your thoughts with d3? If you'd like to go ahead and pause the video, maybe spend 30 seconds on it. What runs through your mind when you see the move d3 in this position? Okay, here's some of my own thoughts you may find helpful. d3 to me seems sensible. You secure e4. You also open up a door for the bishop. But at the same time, do know white has already played in a somewhat inconsistent way. Because just a move ago, white played what move? c3. And for what reason? To follow up with d4. Well, after black exchanges on e4, d4 will no longer hit. And white's queen knight is not too thrilled about no longer having access to c3. Meanwhile, black is enjoying the fact that he will no longer have to deal with any white knight really getting to d5. Black, six moves in, can already feel very comfortable. It's an even position, natural follow-up moves, nice play eventually along the f-file. This is one of the positives with the Schliemann defense, the Cordell Gambit, this play along the f-file. Okay, there's a reason I'm drawing specific attention to this inconsistent move, d3. White is playing consistent in this game. White is not being distracted by this pressure on e4. d4 hits. f takes e4. And the reply in this game is knight g5. Two moves that are considered slightly better are the forceful moves, the capture on c6, the capture on c5. How are these playing out? I want to give you a sense of these moves. If white takes on c6, you take away from the center, position is opening up, and black will need to open up the natural diagonal for the bishop, need to get developed. Knight takes e5, bishop d6. This one goes out a little bit further with some check, a block, knight takes g6, knight f6, rook g8 stuff. Okay, sharp continuations, no doubt. The other capture, the capture on c5, this one's a much shorter continuation, chop, chop, knight f6. White enjoys the bishop pair, black will enjoy this play along the f-file. Maybe this pawn could be a thorn as well on e4. Okay, in this game, the knight simply goes to g5. Black now reacts to the threat on the bishop. 
white continues with d5, and black plays in the best way. I'll throw this to you as a pop quiz. What would you play here as black? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, best move is e3. Now, those of you who were thinking of retreating the knight, uh, bad news for you. <laughs> White uh, has a wonderful move in this position. I'm just going to put it on. You ready for the wonderful move? Ouch. <laughs> okay, that is one cooked queen. Okay, this guy is pinned. Okay, so let's not allow that. We need to move forward and disconnect uh, this knight. Interference move. We're threatening queen takes knight with e3. All right, in this game, the knight is captured. And considered best here is to take on f2. This is not what black plays. Instead, he takes with the b pawn. Still wants to keep the queens on. Taking like this. We get the queen exchange, not a good continuation. Okay, he goes with b takes c6. And the reply in this game is h4 to secure the knight. But surprisingly enough, um, white could actually take on e3. After this move, h4, it's winning for black. So this is white's last chance to stay in the game. Check this one out. Bishop takes e3. Bishop takes bishop. And it seems like. Black's just going to be winning a piece soon. Like, or there's going to be a, a really big problem if you recapture queen takes knight. This guy's hit. There's a problem here, problem there. Where is there not a problem for white? But surprisingly enough, in this position, after bishop takes bishop, white would have this move. Bishop takes c6. Rook b8 is a good move here. What is one of the points behind this? Well, it's if you take the bishop, white will be able to exchange the queens. And then there's no longer this pressure on the knight anymore without the queen around. And from this position, white could now collect the bishop. Important not to go in for the fork either. Going in for the fork. This bishop is rescued and this knight will be hunted soon enough. Okay. That's a really slick continuation. This, this, bishop takes c6, not the most natural follow-up. Okay, I don't know that either player uh, saw that specific continuation. In this game, h4, now black is completely winning. Captures on f2 check. King f1. Takes on b5. So I believe with this game, white saw... Up until this move right here, queen d5, things look pretty appealing here. You see the double attack? Rook is hit, but there's the even bigger threat. Checkmate. Gotta defend that one. Knight h6 is the follow-up. There goes the rook, but in a way, there goes the white queen because c6 is now played. <laughs> this queen is stuck how do you how do you get out in the game knight e4 is played if the queen is trying to slip out let's say queen b8 black can castle if you're grabbing the pawn there's rook e8 rook e1 for mate it's already a losing position for white what's tried is knight e4 castles perfect king uh, cozy king, perfect shelter, and this guy does not have many options. Stuck on f1. Bishop g5, we are, we're only one move out from white resigning. Can you spot uh, Roman's final move here? If you'd like to, go ahead and pause the video. What move would you play here? Okay, there's multiple wins, but the move that forces resignation is b4 <laughs> ignoring the threat on the queen 
uh, we have uh, what black has with this last move before opened up this diagonal and is threatening checkmate in two or simply the win of the queen. There's no good follow up here for white. Considered best is to give up the queen like this. What's the mate exactly if you take the queen? Black hits with this check. You could only block. And there's checkmate. What a pretty finish. B4 simply opening up this diagonal. Killer bishops working on adjacent diagonals for mate. A pretty finish with this Cordell Gambit. Only a 14 mover. Anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.